Gordon was feeling unwell. While he was being mended, the fat controller asked Bear to look after the express. Bear was excited. He loved thundering down the line and quickly made friends with the passengers and coaches. I can see why you all love this train, he would say to the others. You really feel a part of the railway when you pull it. The other engines understood Bear's feelings all too well and were very happy for him. All except one. One evening, Bear arrived back at the shed after the last express of the day. The other engines were already there. Have a good run, Bear, asked Henry. It couldn't have been better, smiled Bear. That makes one of us, grumbled James. Why can't someone else have a turn instead? The others rolled their eyes, but Bear was sympathetic. Tell you what, why don't we swap jobs tomorrow? I'll do your work and you can take the express, finished James, his voice filled with the sounds of euphoria. Next morning, after their drivers had agreed to the change, James left to pull the express while Bear went to take a goods train. Make way for an important engine, called James as he raced past Bear at the junction. And a hello to you too, chuckled Bear. Soon, Bear arrived at the workstation. As he shunted his trucks into a siding, the foreman came up. Glad to see you've arrived, he said. Your coaches are waiting for you in the workshop. Coaches? puzzled Bear. Lined up in the works was a rake of brand new express coaches ready to be taken to Tidmouth. How splendid, said Bear admiringly, catching sight of his reflection in their paintwork. As he left, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, something all too familiar. As he passed a station further along, Bear felt the train getting heavier. Oh, not again, he sighed knowingly. Indeed, thanks to a defect, the air brakes on one of the coaches had failed, and before Bear knew it, the train had slowed to a crawl. They struggled on to a signal box, hooting for a road. The signalman set the points onto a passing loop and telephoned back up the line to halt the express. It's too late, replied the second signalman in a panicked voice. You'll have to flag him down. With red flag in hand, the guard shot up the line like a jackrabbit, leaving Bear and his crew to handle the coaches. The sound of screeching brakes filled the air as Bear slowly dragged the coaches into the loop. Come on, he growled fiercely, not again. A familiar whistle sent chills through Bear's radiator. James saw the guard waving his red flag and a coach jutting out onto the main line. Get out of the way, he cried frantically, breaking with all his might. With an almighty growl, Bear tugged the coaches one final time, bracing for impact. But to his surprise, there was none. James raced past on the main line, Bear's coaches having cleared it just in the nick of time. He gave a sigh of relief. Oh, who would have thought empty coaches could be so exciting? The driver made a temporary fix for the damaged brake line, and Bear was able to bring the coaches to the big station. The fat controller was waiting. Well done, Bear! He said, not only did you stop a nasty accident, but you still managed to bring the coaches home. You're a really useful engine. Bear blushed. Thank you, sir, but what about the damaged coach? Well, said the fat controller, I suppose we know what James' first job will be tomorrow. Bear couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs>